A sequence a n is bounded if and only if there exists some real number that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence. That's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. If you need a recap on bounded sequences, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on the topic. This should seem pretty intuitive. If a sequence is bounded, then surely there is a bound on how far away from zero terms in the sequence get. And this is just a mathematical way of stating that. There's some real number greater than or equal to the absolute value, which is the distance from zero, of every term in the sequence. And of course, the converse is true as well. This is an if and only if statement. So if there's some real number that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence, then the sequence is bounded, meaning it has some lower bound that's less than or equal to every term and some upper bound that's greater than or equal to every term. All right, hopefully it's pretty well understood now. Let's go ahead and get into the proof. We'll begin by assuming that our sequence is bounded and use that assumption to prove that there must exist this sort of real number. Now, if our sequence is bounded, by definition, there is some real number, a lower bound, say L, that's less than or equal to every term in the sequence, and every term in the sequence must be less than or equal to some real number, an upper bound, let's say U. Now, you'd probably agree that in order to find some real number that's going to be at least as far away from zero as every term in the sequence, we could probably do for considering the lower and upper bound. They could probably clue us in to such a real number. So how can we use this lower and upper bound to figure out a real number that's going to fit our desired condition? Well, if the lower bound and upper bound are both negative, then certainly the lower bound is at least as negative as the upper bound. If they're both negative, we couldn't possibly have an upper bound that's more negative than the lower bound. That wouldn't make sense. So in that case, when they're both negative, the absolute value of L, that would be the further distance from zero. L would be further from zero, and since it's negative, we'd take its absolute value. On the other hand, if they're both positive, then certainly U is at least as positive as L, or it might be more positive, and so U, just U, we don't need its absolute value since it's positive in that case, just U, that would be the further distance from zero. Now, if one's negative and one is positive, then of course that forces the lower bound to be negative and the upper bound to be positive, and which one's gonna have the greatest distance from zero? Well, the distance of our negative lower bound from zero would be the absolute value of the lower bound. The distance of the positive upper bound from zero would be the upper bound, u. Whatever that number is, is its distance from zero. So to compare them, we could just take the maximum. That way we don't have to break this into cases. We can say that the number we're looking for or at least a number that satisfies the condition we're looking for is going to be this maximum. Okay, all the stuff I just said was intuition as to how we would identify this number as one that might work in the first place, but we still have to prove that it works. And for convenience, let's go ahead and call this number M. Again, this is the maximum of the absolute value of the lower bound on our bounded sequence and the upper bound on our bounded sequence. And let me just rewrite this M a little bit because it was looking pretty ugly, something like that. So how can we prove that the or that M is greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in our sequence. Well, a nice handy way to show that the absolute value of something is less than or equal to something else is to show this. We just need to show that negative M is less than or equal to every term in the sequence, which is less than or equal to M. So this inequality is equivalent to this inequality. And I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson where we prove that these two inequalities are equivalent. It's very handy, and that's how we will proceed with the proof. 
All right, so if we can show that this arbitrary term of our sequence a n is less than or equal to m and greater than or equal to negative m, then we'll be done this direction of the proof. We will have shown that this is a number greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in our sequence. So how can we do that? Well, let's try to string this equality along, or excuse me, string this inequality along in both directions. We of course know that our arbitrary term of our sequence is less than or equal to u, the upper bound. How does u compare to m? Well, certainly u has to be less than or equal to m by definition. If u is the maximum of this set, then u is equal to m. On the other hand, if u is not the maximum of this set, then m will be greater than u. So u is definitely less than or equal to m. Now, how about going this other direction? We want to end this side of the inequality with greater than or equal to negative m. To start off, we of course know that the arbitrary term of our sequence a n has to be greater than or equal to the lower bound l. Now, we want to find a way to compare l to its absolute value because it's the absolute value of l that's kind of part of this definition of m. Here's a nice way we can do it. We know that l is greater than or equal to the negative of its absolute value. And how do we know that? Well, if L is non-negative, then taking the absolute value won't change it, but then taking the negative can only reduce it. So certainly in that case, this is less than or equal to this. On the other hand, if L is negative, the absolute value will make it positive, and then the negative will just make it L again. So they'll actually be equal in that case. But certainly this holds. L is greater than or equal to the opposite of its absolute value. Now, what do we know about negative absolute value of L? Well, we know that it has to be greater than or equal to negative m, which is just what we wanted. And think about this last step for a minute. How do we know that this is true? It's actually very simple, and this too just follows by the definition of m. m must be greater than or equal to the absolute value of l, just like how m must be greater than or equal to u. Then, multiplying both sides of this inequality by negative 1 gives us that negative m is less than or equal to negative absolute value of l. And so, as desired, we see that every term in our sequence is less than or equal to m and greater than or equal to negative m. So, since this is equivalent to this, we have proven that the absolute value of every term in our sequence is less than or equal to this number m. We've just proven that if a sequence is bounded, then using its bounds, we can find a real number that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term of the sequence. So we're done with the first direction of the proof. The next direction is pretty trivial, and we want to prove in this next direction that if the distance of every term in the sequence from zero is bounded, so if we have a number like this, it's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence, then the sequence itself must be bounded. And there's really nothing to it. So we assume there exists this real number m that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence, then by the same equivalence that we used earlier, we know that this means a n must be less than or equal to m and greater than or equal to negative m. And again, I'll leave a link in the description to a proof of the equivalence of these two inequalities. And this is what we wanted to prove. This shows that our sequence is bounded. m is an upper bound on the sequence and negative m is a lower bound because every term of the sequence lies between negative m and m. And so we're done. So indeed, a sequence is bounded if and only if there exists some real number that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence. This just gives us a nice equivalent definition of what it means for a sequence to be bounded. 
and I hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the jolliest math lessons on the internet.